I'm here to support um, my partner's claim on the affirmative side that the SAT should be abolished as a requirement for college entrance. Um, as, she's, uh, as, she's, as my partner stated, excessive testing teaches children to be good at test taking but does not prepare them for productive adult lives. Um, according to the education researcher uh, Gerald W. Uh, Bracey, a PhD, uh, he, said, he said that standardized tests cannot measure uh, creativity, critical thinking, re uh, resilience, motivation, um, persistence, curiosity, endurance, reliability, self-discipline, honesty, courage, and civic-mindedness. Uh, this is because it only focused on a certain uh, number and certain uh, cases of, of uh, things they would learn in the classroom. Uh, most studies find that the correlation between SAT scores and the first year of college grades is not overwhelming, and it's only 10 to 20 percent of the variation in the first year. Uh, GPA um, is explained. Um, yeah, uh, and uh, in an article that says uh, should the SAT matter by uh, John Cloud, he said that there was a study uh, at Lafayette College in Pennsylvania. And uh, they started a five-year experiment with making the SAT optional. Um, and they found that the test, uh, combined with other, um, with other, um, with other things, uh, correlated better with their students' performance on the, um, the other measures alone. Uh, the second claim that we have is that the SAT is unfair and biased. Um, it is biased um, to, towards the, the rich because um, according to uh, John Cloud, uh, the Princeton Review uh, has an SAT class that they offer, and it's it can range anywhere from eight hundred dollars uh, all the way to maybe even about like a thousand dollars. And they typically meet for six weeks, and the students are expected to memorize information. This is unfair to those who can't afford SAT classes uh, because of their socio-economic um, lives. Um, in an article that uh, this states the pros and cons of the SAT, uh, it states that the standardized testing such as the SAT are clearly socio-economically biased. Uh, they, um, uh, they, they, are te they test um, students on things that they, they learn over time, even as uh, far back as like middle school and they're expected to remember everything. And over time, of course, we all remember, or we all forget something. And um, this is when tutoring is needed. This is another uh, uh, unfair advantage to the poor because they cannot afford um, not only the classes, but also tutoring as well, like private tutoring. Another important issue on why it is unfair and biased is that um, they uh, is the issue of renorming the test. Culturally, bi uh, they have culturally biased questions, ethnic and gender differences in scores, self-selection of the test takers, and uh, differential participation of the subgroups. Um, in the article by John Cloud, um, he says that assuming that we can measure inn innate intelligence, do we want a society that rewards genes? Are we afraid of what kinds of society that might be? Or should we instead reward only achievements of, of a life, of what we do with our gifts and not what we start with? Um, going back to um, an old claim that I had that uh, the SAT, it only shows how good, you're, uh, how good of a test taker you are. There could be someone who isn't really a good test taker but wants to get an arts program in a college. It's, not, it's unfair to them because they aren't able to show their potential uh, to the college that they want to enter in for their major. Um, in the pros and cons uh, article, it says that this, the SAT does not make room for multiple intelligences. It idealizes only a very specific set of skills and impedes the goals of students who might be otherwise extremely talented. My, uh, the last thing that we have is that the SAT should, uh, should be replaced by subject tests. Um, the cost for, to take an SAT is uh, roughly $50. And um, 
and uh, the subject test is actually uh, cheaper than the original SAT one. Um, but that together with the study guide is about um, eighty dollars, while the SAT two the SAT two subject test only costs about twenty three dollars, with an additional twenty three if they take a listening uh, or language. Um, and the study guide, and plus all that together with the study guide is still less than um, what you would pay for the SAT and the class. Um, aside from uh, the class inequality, the test failure to measure anything we, uh, of what some people might call meaningful uh, also means that kids were spending a lot of their time on other uh, over pedagogical phantoms at the expense of real learning. Most people, when they study for the SAT, they spend hours and hours studying on that, and they disregard any other things that they might have to do or learn in the, other, in the class. Um, some even spend about uh, 11 hours minimum just studying on the SAT, memorizing vocab and things that they might not even use in the future. Uh, there was a new study of standardized testing that was released by the UC office of uh, the president, and that found that, found that the scores of the SAT 2 are better predictors of the UC um, freshman uh, grades than those of the SAT 1. Uh, the, the same president, Richard uh, Atkinson, says that the test hurls uh, kids into months of, of practicing word games and math riddles at the expense of studying chemistry or poetry. Uh, he said he would want to have the SAT an optional part for all UC applicants. Uh, so we believe that the SAT should be abolished and, uh, and should be replaced with the subject test. <laughs>